turned, ready to scorch. First of all, uh, risk assessment. Let's sweep the shavings off the lay. I don't want to be responsible for any burnt down workshops. Right, so that's cool. <coughs> I know you're using uh, ash. Mm -hmm. Is there any reason you couldn't use any other open grain wood? No, no, whatsoever. Um, good question. Ash is traditionally um, a wood used for two handles, whether it was axe handles, uh, hickory was another one. And uh, basically, Craig, because I'm turned tool handles of the tra traditional wood was ash, it's resilient, it's strong, and that's the reason. Plus, it's got an open grain. However, there's nothing stopping you doing, uh, doing this with any open grain. It could be oak, just depending on what you use the handle for. See, as a, wood, it, as a wood dealer, I was hoping you would tell them to use Gaboon Ebony or Macassar Ebony, something like that. Uh, and then you would make, <laughs> you would make the it. Actually, it's difficult to get that I stuff know. now. Actually, difficult. Well, it's a lot more expensive. Yeah, it is. It so, is. I was hoping you'd tell them that. Uh, well, I've got, <laughs> the, the guys know me. I'm always uh, on their side. <laughs> right, so, um, camera lady, can you come back here, please? <laughs> Okay, what I'm using is, I'm using map gas, that's the yellow canister. Uh, map gas stands for mixture of acetylene and propane. It's a much hotter gas than, than just the propane. Um, I like the fact that in just, it's a piezo lighter. That gives me a lot of control. So we're gonna scorch it basically. And what I'm looking for, um, you might be able to zoom in on this, is when, I'm looking for the grain here to be a bright red, okay? And that's scorched enough, okay? If you don't get that bright red, you might see yellow of the flame, uh, uh, the, the, the stuff in the woods burn, now technically I'm not sure what it is, but the stuff in the woods burn, you get a yellow flame, and then you'll see the, the grain, the annular rings go red. That's the right stage. When you get to that stage, back off. Um, I'm just gonna burn this up and down. You'll see, you'll see. Right, here we go. Now I am burning away from where the ferrule is going to fit. I don't want to burn that too much and, and have it, it just doesn't look right. So burn away from that joint, that, that edge, that sharp edge there. Now, just to tell you, the hottest part of the flame is yeah. shit. Is that? Excuse me. The hottest part of the flame is there. Okay. And so, um, depend on where you hold the torch, will give you a different uh, a different heat. I right, go back to here. There. You get the yellow flame. Just let that go off and then watch. When I hit it again, see the grain, you'll just see it go a bright red. There you go. That's the stage. That's the stage you want to take it to where you see that red down into the into the annular rings of the red. Let sections cool off a little bit, then you can go back to them. You'll see the redness after the yellow flame. steel brush, a brass brush, and that will take away 
the softer burnt wood on the surface. Go with the grain, don't go across the grain because you'll put uh, scratches in there. Go with the grain and brush away all the loose stuff. Jimmy, I've done several of these handles and I, yeah. not only are they aesthetically pleasing, but the feel is much nicer in my opinion than a regular solid wood finished handle. Do you know what? It's um, funny you should say that. It's, it's true. Um, when you feel this now, it feels like a piece of wood. It feels like, uh, I don't know, it's been weathered for hundreds of years or whatever, but absolutely, when you hold it, you can feel the grain. It just, I, I don't know, it just feels more ergonomic. Yeah, it has um, a very tactile feel. I, absolutely. I, I, do you know, I like the wooden handle. It's traditional, and, and I tend to be a little bit traditional. Um, nothing wrong with metal handles. However, you know, in the winter, the cold, when you pick them up, um, they are not particularly ergonomic. Uh, with a wooden handle, you can shape it whatever, whatever shape you want. Well, you can make it to fit you. You can personalize it. Uh, it's not just an off-the-shelf deal. And uh, I don't know. This is. I like the black. Um, I like the way it feels. And I mean, this is. It's. This is overkill at the end of the day. A handle's a handle, you know. But. Uh, what's wrong with doing this? People customize cars, they customize lace, uh, they customize guns, fishing rods, whatever. So yeah, it's 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 aesthetic. It's uh, and I'll tell you what, it's eye candy when you put the the ferrules in the end. You know the quick release or the or the grub screw. And the red or the blue looks good with black. Black's a neutral color, and yeah, it looks super cool. So, bit of tissue. Just gonna wipe off the excess dust. Get it to look the same. Make sure we get rid of all the all the loose stuff. And now what I'm going to do? Now that wood's still warm. In fact, it's hot. It's still quite hot. I'm going to get this. Um, you can use various products. Uh, I got this from Lowe's. Howard Feed and Wax. It's basically what I'm after. Is a soft wax. Um, what have we used down at your place? Uh, the Brie Brie wax. Oh, the Brie uh, wax. Brie yes. Wax ebony and you use the ebony. Now it's a black wax that would be perfect for if you missed a little bit it would fill it in nicely uh, and give you a nice jet black finish. So what's going to happen here is I'm basically using a soft paste wax which is going to mix with the carbon still left on the surface of the wood and um, give me a real nice finish. Now you'll see the wax really really soak into the wood. It's hot and the capillary action is going to draw it draw right in there you go, dries very very quickly as I say that handle is still hot and it just gives you a real nice satin sheen, this is, I mean it goes on shiny but it's going to dull off slightly as the, as the wax dries the other thing I like this is the handle's still wet it's drawn it into the handle um, it's not just a surface finish oh, that, don't be shy with this stuff um, it'll soak right into the wood you can see what's doing there, mixing, look at that, jet black. So all the carbon is mixing with the wax and we're getting a really, really nice finish on there. Get it right down into the grain of the wood. There we go. And then just finish off. You can see as it's drying and starting to go dull. What we're going to do now is we're going to use a sanding sealer which has a slightly larger particle than, um, than some of the other finishes of satin and the gloss and that's going to seal this wood. Now a load of, loads of guys say to me, you can't do that, you can't put uh, lacquer on top of wax. You'll be surprised, it's amazing. Don't uh, try it for yourself, you can. I'm going to prove to you just now. Okay, so there's the handle all waxed up. We're going to get the, uh, I'm going to use Deft. Good product, nice quality spray nozzle on that. Um, give it a good spray, uh, sorry, a good shake. Mix it up well, and we're just going to lightly wax, uh, sorry, seal the wax on the handle. That wood, I'm feeling it's still hot, okay? Just to let you know that. Give the can a good shake, don't spray with a cold tin because, uh, or a cold can because you get spitty bits coming out. 
warm it up a little bit. Now by warming it up, I mean maybe put it in the, on the windowsill for a few minutes or whatever. Don't put it in the microwave. It doesn't work. Now what happens if you don't use the sanding sealer and you just go to the grain fillers? You don't. What tends to happen is the waxes go too far into the pores of the boards. You don't get that build up um, and the, the colours aren't quite as vivid as if you seal the pores. Now the other thing we're going to do on this is uh, we're going to put a pearl, a pearl white on first. Now giving it a base of pearl white kind of reflects the top colour, whether it's a red or a blue or green or whatever. So we'll give it a white first and then we'll wipe on, because we're putting it on this one, we're going to put the blue metallic in because it's got a nice blue metallic uh, top. That matches in nicely from a design point of view. So. Uh, yes, good question. That does it. so the sealing it does make a difference. So just like this. But if you wanted it. a more pastel color, don't bother sealing it. Color. Don't seal it. If it, uh, but again, it depends what you want. This is the type of thing where I could talk to you till I'm blue in the face. You've got to try it out and experiment. It might work different on different woods. Um, you've just got to get the product and work with it. Your li your only limitation is that what you can think of to do with the actual product. You know. But there's a huge, again, a huge variation of colours. Um, yeah, you can knock yourself out. So that's well shook up, as Elvis would say. Just seal that in nicely. Don't go too close, don't get those runs. There we go. So that's nicely sealed. It's a sealer, so it's going to dry. Uh, it won't dry shiny, it'll dry matte. But that's going to give us a great base. Um, tell you what, just going to touch that. That's more or less dry now. The wood is still, I can, I can feel the heat coming off the wood. So it's, it's still, that's, that's dry great. What I'm going to do now is put the satin on top. What this tends to do is to just put a little bit of a sheen on the top of the grain. Um, it, again, it, it, it affects how the colors look, okay? You'll find this out for yourself. That's good. There we go, perfect. Nice, even sprays. Again, don't get too close. And don't over spray. You're better off putting two or three coats on and building up to a, the finish you want than putting a thick, heavy one off on. And especially on this stuff, it's really difficult on the on the scorched ash, uh, scorched ash to get rid of a run. You just scratch the whole surface. So that's perfect. A nice satin sheen to that. That's going to look absolutely awesome when it's uh, done. Good. So we're going to let that dry, uh, give it a minute or two, make sure it's properly cured. If the lacquer is still wet, you got you might soften it, get a smudge mark, and you've undone, well, however, however long it takes earlier, you get as far. When you're doing this, it's better to use the pearl white first. The reason for that is because it, it, it uh, reflects the light reflects back. Reflects the light back, and it, and it, it colors up the, uh, it colors the color, whichever color you're using, looks a lot better, it brightens it up. Um, one other thing, do not over spray the handle so you fill the pores. If you fill the pores, you're not gonna, you'll get a patchy effect and so give it an even spray. There's still, you'll probably see, there's still a lot of pore in there. So, bit of paper towel. The less you put on here, the less you've got to wipe off. However, you've got to put enough on to get it into the pores. So we're going to spread this on here, get it right down into the pores of the wood, put it back, there we go, and just work that in. Then we're going to switch the lathe on and remove the excess on the surface. Now then, um, in the past, when I've demoed uh, using gilt creams, before I had my own product, some of the gilt creams there out in the market can over a period of time being stored or whatever thicken up and uh, that would be more difficult to spread. You can see this is spreading on really nicely. 
some of the other products that I've used in the past um, tended to be a little bit too thick and so what I would have to do is to uh, and thick straight from the product itself is too thick and what I'd have to do is to put oil on the surface first Danish oil, teak oil, something like that that would soften the product and get it to flow into the grains of the wood into the pores of grain of the wood um, with my stuff that was irritating to me so I had it made up so that it was thinner and that it would actually get down into the pores of the wood without having to use an oil on top of the, uh, the sealer. Jimmy, we found um, in manufacturing this product that actually if you don't like a color um, or you don't like the way it's coming out, that the way to remove the, the right, yes. cream filler is to use an oil and it will take it and out of kind the of floods the floods the pores yes. and, and, and takes the oil back out. So so basically what you're saying is Don't use they, the oil. <laughs> or or if you don't get quite what you want, if if it's not the effect you want, you can take it out and start right. again. So yes. nothing's cast in stone here. Right, okay, so we've got that now nicely covered. Just a little bit up here. So I'm going to switch the lathe on and wipe off a small paper towel, put the lid on this, switch the lathe on fast. The reason I'm switching on fast is because I want to only want to take the product off the surface. If you do it slow, the cloth can sometimes again drag it out of the out of the hollows. Keep using a clean piece of paper. So you take off the excess. If you just go backwards and forwards, you're just spreading it about the surface. Back, get rid of that. Just clean one. There we go. You can see, you can still remove the stuff on the surface. Okay, that should be fine. Excellent. See all it's in there. Don't worry if you've missed little bits. Yeah, there's a little bit, but that'll mix with the blue. Okay, so we'll get slightly different tones in there. So now, here we are. Now, yeah? if you've got a lot of the color that you don't like in a certain area, you can hand buff at this stage to get the excess off the top, we found. So too. basically, you're saying just yeah. rub in particular areas. Right. Well, you see that there, that's more end grain. That's more long grain, so it's going to take slightly differently sure. anyway. Right, so. Oh, no, you're applying the blue now. Going right? to put the metallic blue on now. So again, there we are. That's the product. Wipe that over the surface. Now again, uh, you could color code your, your tools. So at a glance, you're not looking at the... Uh, size of the tool or whether it's a spindle gouge or bowl gouge uh, you can see the glance because it's colour coded as to what the tool is. Now you can also feather colours together so you can get a flame effect or whatever effect you're, you're looking for. It doesn't have to be just blue on that tool. Okay and so what, uh, what colour Okay, let's shout something out. If you're going to mix, what, you, what else could it put in? Green? Closer to the end, I might even go to the solid blue and where it'll be a darker color than the metallic up at the front. What about a green? You can do that I'll too. tell you what, go and get a green. Okay. Go and get a you green. Want metallic or solid? Metallic. Let's keep it all metallic. This stuff spreads so nicely. And I'll tell you what, Craig, the, uh, the white... After you finish smashing them all. <laughs> Excellent. Aspen green. Excellent. So, into there. Again, a lot of this is going to get some up the top there. And we're going to put a bit of more, a little bit of open grain there. Let's get the blue into here. There. So again, just work it in to where, wherever you want it to be. Get rid of that. Put the lid on here. And we'll try a bit of green. So we want a unique handle. Yeah, you can see the uh, 
I'm not quite sure if you can see that, but it's, there's a definite metallic fleck in there. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm interested, I'm really interested to see on various um, website chat rooms and whatever, some of the products I'm hoping, oh wow. That's super cool. Sometimes you gotta get them out in the sun to yeah, really to see really the metallic see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a open, very dude. fine metallic just gonna flake. Fleck. Let's just flex some green up oh, into here as well. Let's see what we get there. Yeah, there's no reason why they can't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Can't be mixed. Right, so that's nice and covered. We're going to switch the lathe on, do exactly what we did before we put the colours on, switch the lathe on and take off the excess. We'll turn this fast here. Right, the way off the piece, look at all that excess there. And the heat starts to melt it up a little bit, which is great. Thanks, Craig. Of that, it's a nice clean cloth. Still taking a little, little bit off there. Let's switch it off and have a look. Oh wow! You can see hints of blue, the metallic blue. You can see hints of green in there. Um, wow, that's really nice. So. Okay, so that, that's just a, an example of, of how you can use these products. Um, you can mix them, uh, not only the, 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 the gilt creams or the, or the solid colours, uh, the powders, they can be mixed. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit later on what the powders can do. And uh, again, you limit it to what you can think of doing. Okay, this looks really cool. So, just to finish it off, I'm going back to the satin. <coughs> I'm using Deft again, good product. Um, we're just going to spray this handle up, give that a good shape, and uh, I'm going to seal it with the satin, satin clear wood finish. Now, that when you do this, one thing very, very important: don't go too close. If you go too, if you go too close, what happens is the solvents and the lacquer flush, and the pressure of the of the spray flush the wax back out of the pores and it'll look patchy. Be vigilant about this, take, come back here, take a light spray and turn around as you're doing it, leave it, be patient here, leave it, then come back in a minute or two and give it another coat. Do not over spray it, okay? This will make a difference as well. It's a nice quality nozzle on the depth. There we go. So be patient. That sealed in there nicely. And just see hints of metallic green in there. Um, actually, one of the products that I forgot to mention before is we actually have a, a, a flip flop uh, color. And there's one, what, which is, is it's blue to like a blue to a reddish color? A blue to a reddish purple. color, yeah. And that looks amazing. How the guy, how, how, how the guy makes that, I don't know, incredible. <laughs> but you put it on, That's a and, trade secret. And, and as it turns, you, it goes from blue to red depending on how the light catches it. Uh, that's another product we have. Interesting, you know, depending on uh, how you display your work, if you put on a little turntable. Um, as it's spinning, you will see different colours through the through the, uh, the 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 product. It looks absolutely amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to let this dry, and then all we have to do is put the put, put the piece together, put the ferrule on, epoxy the uh, either the grub screw collet or the quick release into the end, and you've got yourself um, a personal ergonomic, really nice to feel handle. Um, embellished with, with some of the products. And again, you don't have to just do this on a handle. You can do it on anything, any wood which has an open grain. And it, you can have some marvellous effects. So, guys, knock yourself out. Thank you very much and see you later.